Welcome to How It's Devd, a show where we take mechanics from games and recreate them as a learning resource. Welcome to the first ever episode of How It's Devd, and today we are going to recreate some mechanics from No Man's Sky. Those mechanics in question being utilizing the mining cannon and mining resources from the environment. So to get started, we are going to need a terrain. And in this case, in the asset store, we will use low poly ground. The next thing we are going to need are resources. In this case, we're going to use low poly resource rocks. And the last will be guns. And in this case, we are using hand painted low poly guns. And all three of these assets are free in the Unity asset store, which I already have imported into my project. So without further ado, let's take a look at how No Man's Sky does it so we can get a grip of what we are going to do today. What we need to learn today is how to make a first person character, how to make that first person character move, ray casting, registering collisions with ray casting, and implementing an overheating and cooldown timer on the mining cannon itself. So let's start off with learning how to make a first person character. So the first thing that we really want to do is create the character itself. And we're going to make this super simple. We're just going to create a cube and I'm just going to zero out everything. Let's modify it just a tad. And let's give it a height of two. Oh, one. There we go. Right. Plain, simple, easy to do. There's our character. It's a giant cube. Next up, what we want to do is bring it, bring the camera up to the object. Just gonna raise it just a tad. There we go. So we're just gonna attach the camera to be pretty much the head of this cube. There. All right. Cool. <clears throat> yes, I'm running a VPN. Anyways, now we have the camera on top of the cube as the head. Now, we'll attach the cube be part of the main camera. So when that camera moves, so does the cube. Straightforward, simple. We have now created our first person camera. Next, now we need to make this first person character move. So we have first person character and camera all set up nicely. So now we need to do some coding. So let's create a new script and we're going to call this character controller. Open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. And if you want to use Visual Studio Code with Unity 3D, you need to have the C Sharp scripting uh, extension. Otherwise, you won't get the IntelliSense for it. Now, we have everything we need. So, let's create a public float speed variable. And you know, let's set it uh, with a default value of five. Let's see, what else do we need? 
that should be fine for now. It's the only public variable, and the reason we do that is so that we can actually modify the values while we have Unity up. Now that we have that, we can do actually private void move. And we're gonna do if and I'm not going to worry about code conventions here, otherwise I would do the proper thing, which would be to do horizontal and vertical axis. So if input dot get key key code dot left no not key code left. Uh, let's see, we're gonna do key code A. Then transform dot translate. Vector three dot left times time dot delta time times speed. Done. If input dot get key key code dot s pretty much the same thing transform dot translate we want vector three oops not vector four vector three dot right time I can't type today. If input dot get key oops key code dot <clears throat> key code dot this should be it for down. And I'm just gonna do this. It. We're gonna change this to vector three dot down, and then the last one if input that key key code dot w. Let me change this to vector three dot up. do void update move I like to move it move it all right straightforward save and now on the main camera will attach the character controller so now oh, you see the positions actually updating and actually, now that I think about it, I messed up. How? I did vector 3 up and down. It should be back and forward. Alright, so let's add something to the scene so that way we can actually see these taking effect. So I'm going to throw a cube here. I'm gonna duplicate said cube, I'm gonna throw it here. Alright, there. Is that not in the field of view? Apparently not. So we can see the cubes now. Oh, well, you know, they're there. So we now have movement. Straightforward, simple, easy. 
Now we can move on to the next portion, which will be that. I cannot speak today. Alright, so let's talk about utilizing ray casting. And that is actually a little bit of a, mis a misnomer. Because in Unity, it, what we'll actually be using is a line render. So, without further ado, let's actually get started. So let's call this grip mm, cast. Or just cast. Alright, now we can remove everything, and first thing we want to do is line render, call it line. Next, void start. In the start method, we want to get component, line render, this gets, grabs the reference to the line render that we're using. And then line dot enable enabled equals false. The reason why we set the line render to be false right here in the start method is because we actually don't want that uh, ray cast to be shown or active until we explicitly call it. Next up, we're going to create an I enumerate. And we're going to call this Fire Cannon. Now what the I enumer enumerator does, I always want to say enumerable, but it's not enumerable. Uh, the, the I enumerator, the way it works within Unity, is it requires a yield return statement. So it's easier to just call yield return no. Let me show you. Yield return no. That would get rid of any errors that you would have. And the reason why we're using this I enumerable enumerator is because we want to call something called a coroutine. And you can think of it like multi-threading. That's essentially what it emulates in the game environment. So, first things first. Line that enabled. False. Not false. True. While input that get button fire one. This is what we want to happen. So while within this loop so while this loop remains true I'm a stickler for line units ray ray equals new thank you keyboard equals new ray And we want its origin point to be transformed that position. Easy. Vector 3 to direction. We want it to be vector 3 dot forward. This means it travels in a straight line from where it's facing. Simple, straight to the point, easy. Now we need line dot set position. So the Index of this position will be zero, and the vector three position will be ray dot origin, the origin point of the ray cast. Line dot set position index being one. Ray dot get point one hundred. So basically, the distance in which it is drawn. And then outside of the wild loop, line dot enable. Update. In the update method, we want if 
and put that get button down. But once this button is pressed and it returns true, then this is what's going to happen from here on out. Stop coroutine. So we don't want it to start at first. Fire cannon. And the coroutines, uh, they take a string value instead of just calling the method name. Start coroutine. Fire cannon. So it takes the string value of the method name, I should say. And that is all the code we actually need. So we'll minus that down. And then on the cube, the next thing we want to do is add component. And as you can see in the search portion, I type line. That allows me to click on line renderer. And as you can see right there on the screen, it shows off a little box that's pink. Game view, it also shows it because it's actually set to enable. So, we'll press play. Hmm, I did something wrong. Let me see here. You know what I forgot to do? Attach the script. And now we see the line renderer working as intended. Here's the other cool thing. We can actually change the width. So it's very, very thin. And as you can see, as I'm going, it actually will travel with me. So that's how you enable a line render. So now, let's talk physics. Now that we've established line renders, now we can actually do the physics of ray casting. And it's rather simple. It's just a few additions to the code we've already written so far. So let's do load distance equals 100F. We can now do Ray cast hit, hit, which just returns information based off of where the line renderer actually is, or the ray itself is, I should say. Now, if physics dot ray cast ray out hit distance line dot set position one hit that point and what we're going to do now is we're going to move the section of set position now we're going to do an else statement It's set to ray dot direction times distance. And that's really all we need to do with the code. So we'll save this. We'll run it. And we can't really see the difference, so let's go ahead and just move this. We'll press play. And as we can see, when it detects a hit, it will not draw through it anymore. So if we actually go back to the original code, where I'll actually just... I'll just comment this out. Do line that set position one. 
one, two, three, that hit point, 100, we've saved it, and then we look, we'll see the huge difference. The original, it cuts right through and continues drawing. And that's not really what you want in this specific scenario. In another scenario, you may want that. So we'll just go ahead and remove the commenting. If we get rid of that get point. But let's look at it one more time. Bam. Beautiful. Alright, so that covers physics with ray casting. Super simple, super quick. Alright, so before we continue on with coding, let's actually build the scene that we will fully be working with. So, to start things off, let's actually add the low poly ground. Boom. Set it to be, you know, let's make it super easy, zero, zero, zero. And we're going to set the Y to be here. And I don't like that. Let's make it an even number. And let's make that an even number to work. Much better. Okay. So before I continue, Valde and Manaza go bye-bye. Next thing I'll do is physics, mesh collider, convex. Physics, Mesh Collider, Convex. There we go. Next up. Really? Fine. There we go. Alright. That's all said and done. Now we need to create our character. Let me just make sure things don't go wonky because I did that. Alright, good. Now we're going to create a cube. Oh yes, a cube. Here's a cubic cube. And let's see. Two. Two top. One point. Yeah, I kind of like that.
And just because... Cube, and I'm gonna call this or repository. Let's zero this out. Doesn't really matter. It's just to organize the cubes. All right, now that we've done that, now we need our our hand painted front loader. I'm just gonna rotate this by on the Y. There we go. I'm just going to extend it a little further out. To the left and out. Much better. And in before someone goes, what the hell is wrong with that front loader? We attach the, the material to it. There. Much better. But wait. There's more. This to the cube as well. The child object. Go back in the scene view. Then we want to create sphere. And this is going to be point. Should be like point one. renderer and we are going to attach that to the front loader next up we are actually going to add a line renderer line boom then point 10 I believe is the link we want now Casting script. We attach that to this. And we should be done with that. And that looks fairly nice, actually. All right, so now we can continue on. I actually forgot to do something. See, on the cube itself, we need to attach the character controller. There we go. Hmm. And now after looking at it, looks like it's a little bit too tall. So let's actually 
fix that. We move the front loader off and we lower it just a tad. Then we attach it back to the cube. There we go, it hits the cubes. Yeah, it's hitting all the cubes now. Good. Alright. Now, for the next part, we need to make it so that we can have our orbs actually go, or the ore, go bye-bye. So I'll create a C-sharp script, and I'm going to call this breakable ore. Open it up in Visual Studio Code. Get rid of that. And the first thing we want to do is have a public float and call it health. And I set that to be 100 float. Simple. And I create a private float and call it current health. And equals zero. Void start. Current health is equal to health. Next portion is public void damage dealt float amount and then current health minus equals amount if current health is less than or equal to zero <clears throat> Work with me. There we go. Game object dot set active equals false. Simple, straight to the point. Basically, what we're doing is we're getting the health that we want, setting the current health to be that amount in the start method, and then we specify the amount of damage that can be dealt. Say if you want multiple weapons and each one does different damage amounts, which is the case with the various different uh, mining cannons within No Man's Sky. And then we set the current health to minus equals, so it will, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Degrade, no, uh, decrement. It will decrement by the amount that we specify. And then we say if current health is less than or equal to zero, or, then the game object will be deactivated. Now we could do a destroy, but set active works just as well. Simple, straight to the point, easy. Now, we actually need to make a slight change to our cast code. Not breakable or cast. So, you can see that my code is slightly different from how I initially had it. And we can actually fix that really quickly here. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. There. Exactly how we had it left off. Sorry, I was playing around with the code a little bit earlier and then... Kind of forgot to switch that part back. <clears throat> Anyways. There's only a few changes we actually need to make. So in this case, it would be in the if statement, or if we actually hit something, we do breakable or breakable equals hit dot collider get component, and then we want to get the breakable or component. 
because it derives from mono behavior. If we don't do that, then Unity complains at runtime. Now we say if breakable is not equal to null, so do a null check. Always do a null check. Breakable dot damage dealt. And then we can specify our amount. In this scenario, I'm gonna do one float. But you could actually have it reference another method or specific weapon that determines the damage. So you can have a weapon class and everything to make sure that everything updates appropriately. Now, we save the code, save the code. Now let's run it. And then we're gonna go boom. Harl. Oh, do you know what I forgot to do? It's actually rather simple. On the camera. We need a physics raycaster. Go so type in ray and we have physics raycaster. Bam, done. There's one other thing we forgot. We didn't attach the script. We didn't attach the script. Oh, and you know it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. That's essentially how it works within No Man's Sky. Now you could do a uh, destroy method, have a lot of animations, but that is effectively how you create the effect of destroying the ore with the cannon. Now let's do the one final thing to have everything tie together beautifully. Alright, let's do this final section now. So let's go ahead and go back to the code. And there's a little bit of changes we have to make just to get this working. It's actually really, really simple. Really, really quick, actually. So we're gonna do int counter equals zero. Easy, straightforward for anyone that has done a counter before. Uh, basically, we're just gonna create a counter, set it to be zero. Min, you're going to do counter equals zero here. You'll find out why here shortly. Counter plus plus, which basically says increment here. All right, now. If. Yeah, if counter is less than 50, not a bit ship. If counter equals 50, then do all of this stuff. Else. Else. I'm a stickler for how things are supposed to look. Okay, line dot enabled. Equals And then we're gonna do a yield return new. Wait for seconds. We're gonna put five. 
pretty easy there. And with the line is enabled equals false. We do nothing. All right, now we'll save that. And then that's fire. And it turns off, wait five seconds and bam. We have effectively recreated the mining mechanic of No Man's Sky, No Man's Sky without uh, obviously the inventory system and everything else. But I will put this code on my GitHub and have a link to my GitHub in the description of the video. If you like the video, please like, comment, comment, subscribe, and let me know uh, what else you would want to see with how it's dev. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this episode of How It's Dev. Be sure to check out the next one coming soon. Alright, so before we continue on with the coding, let's actually build our scene that we're going to use. Alright, so let's go to low poly ground. We'll select the mesh, mesh low poly ground. I am terrible at level design, that is completely fine. We'll just do that. See how it goes. Close enough. Close enough for government work. Alright, so before we continue, let me get rid of the about day. And also I believe it's the yeah, the Mazana. Alright, cool. Now, I'm not going to worry about the sky. Instead, we want to place these rocks. <laughs> I really, really, really hate this. It's boring. And I'm going to place one of each of the variants. Uh, let's see, we're at pointy gym variant 2. And square. And then camera, where be you? Go back. All right, so now I'm gonna add the body to all of them. The mass of one hundred. Uh, yeah, I use gravity. Let's see what happens. Uh, and this needs physics. Mesh collider. A 
Oh, oops. Oh, you make sure you do this. And throw a mesh, mesh collider on all of these as well. Convex two. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. What the fuck are you doing? Stopping the recording, but um, I. 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 Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a blooper rail. It's going on. <laughs> This is gonna get posted. Oh my god, this is funny. <laughs> 